In this video, we're gonna break down the best marketing strategy for a new product or a new business. It's a simple four-step process that you can use to identify the best marketing opportunity for your specific business. That way you can attract more customers while spending less time and effort. Now, if you're brand new to the channel and if you're interested in learning even more about how to build and grow your business, then click the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on future videos. But Let's get straight into it. The number one reason why new businesses fail is they don't attract enough customers. Most make it through the process of choosing a brand name, designing a logo, building a website, and even creating a product or service. But unfortunately, most fail when it comes to attracting customers and closing sales. So that is what we are going to focus on in this video. We're gonna cover the four steps in what is called the bullseye framework as covered in the book Traction by Gabriel Weinberg and Justin Mares. The first step is to brainstorm marketing opportunities. The idea here is to make a list of all of the potential ways you could promote your business, create a complete list, every single possibility that you can think of, and then go down the list and for each one, come up with a realistic plan of how you would use that particular marketing opportunity if it was the only option available to you. So for example, what would you do if the only way you could promote your business was using content marketing or media coverage, or for example, hosting live events? In the case of content marketing, Marketing, maybe you'd consider whether you want to publish articles on a platform like Medium or whether you want to publish videos on a platform like YouTube. Or for example, perhaps you want to host a podcast and use that as an opportunity to grow an audience and promote your business in some way. When it comes to live events, for example, maybe you want to invite multiple speakers out to put on a professional event for a large audience. Or maybe you want to host a local meetup group for passionate enthusiasts that are interested in your products and services and then use that that as a way to drive word of mouth referral or something like that. Now, closer to the end of this video, I'm gonna provide you with a list of 33 proven marketing channels that you can use to attract customers to your business. But again, the idea here is to go down a list like this and treat each one as if it was the only option available to you and then put together a realistic game plan of how you would use that particular channel to promote your business. Now, of course, you will not be taking action on every single opportunity that you come up with because that would spread your efforts way too thin and it would make it far less likely that you would find success with any of the individual marketing channels. But the idea here and why this step is so incredibly important is because it's very easy to fall into the trap of just using a marketing channel based on its popularity or perhaps based on seeing what other competitors in your industry are doing or even just choosing a channel based on your own familiarity. Maybe it's something you've done with a previous business and so you're using it with this new business only because you're already used to using that in the past. Meanwhile, sometimes it's the unconventional or non-traditional marketing opportunities that are the best options for a particular business. And unless you explore the various possibilities, you might not discover some incredible possibilities there. Now, one practical example of this is how Tesla kind of bucked the trend when it comes to all of the different automakers and the fact that most of them use paid advertising as their primary way to promote their vehicles. And meanwhile, Tesla went a completely different direction. They realized that they didn't have the margins to support advertising campaigns. So instead, they focused heavily on word of mouth referral, which was a natural fit for the fact that they had such a unique product in an electric vehicle, and they focused on unconventional PR, which was a natural fit for the fact that they have an interesting CEO in Elon Musk who has a natural ability to generate headlines and to keep the Tesla name in the media. So depending on the business and depending on your unique strengths and the strengths of your product, there might be a marketing channel out there that is far more attractive than just what happens to be popular or what your competitors happen to be using. So it's very valuable to spend a few hours to go through this exercise to broaden your horizons and truly consider all the different options out there. Step number two, identify three to five promising options. Once you have a detailed list, it's time to narrow things down. So the goal behind this step is to choose three to five of the most promising opportunities. Now, when it comes to identifying the most promising opportunities, three factors to consider include speed, predictability, and profitability. Now, of course, speed is very important because when you have a brand new product or a brand new business, you need to generate results faster so that you can bring in revenue and you can continue to build momentum. So go down your list, 
and identify the options that have the greatest possibility of creating results faster. Then it's time to focus on predictability. And there's really two different things to focus on here. Number one is how likely it is that the channel is likely to perform as you are predicting it will. So based on the plan that you have for that channel, how likely is it that it's going to pan out as you expect? And then the other part of this is that you wanna choose channels that are likely to deliver predictable and reliable results for months or even years to come. So you don't wanna choose options that are likely to only generate results in the short term. You wanna identify marketing opportunities that are likely to deliver consistent results over the long term. And finally, profit profitability is very important because of course, just because a marketing channel works for another business doesn't mean it's going to be profitable for your business. And I think the Tesla example from the previous step perfectly illustrates this. All of the other auto manufacturers use paid advertising, but that wasn't going to be profitable for Tesla. So instead they focused on other marketing channels that were more likely to be profitable. So it's very important as you go down the list to consider all three of these factors in speed, predictability and profitability to identify three to five of the most promising options. The next step is to conduct inexpensive tests. Now, this is a step that it can be very tempting to skip over because at this point in the process, you likely have started to feel like you have an intuitive sense of the best marketing opportunities for your business. You've created a list, you've gone through that list, you've narrowed down the field, and almost certainly one or two of the options are really standing out to you at this point. And so there's this temptation to just charge ahead, to choose an option, to get started, and to just see what happens. But it's important to note that up until this point, everything that we've done is largely theoretical. We don't actually have any hard data to suggest that one channel is more likely to perform than other channels. And it's also very important to note that what few marketers and few entrepreneurs really appreciate is that oftentimes there's just one marketing channel that is far and away the best marketing channel for their specific product or their specific business. So our goal here at the end of the day is to improve our odds of identifying that marketing channel, the one that is most likely going to create the best results for the least amount of time or effort, because this allows us to really accelerate the overall growth of our venture. If we choose the wrong channel, it can be like fighting uphill, where everything is a challenge and it's hard to generate revenue, and we just don't get any real momentum. Whereas if we choose the right marketing opportunity, we bring in more revenue, we can allocate some of that revenue to further marketing efforts, we can allocate some of it to improving or creating new products and services, Everything is made easier when we have a marketing channel that is truly performing. So it's very important that we go through this step and confirm that we have great opportunities and that we can further narrow the field. Now, when it comes to this step, the goal is to conduct inexpensive tests or in the case of options that aren't easy to test financially, we can conduct further research. So for example, when it comes to paid marketing opportunities, we can allocate a small budget, test the waters, get a sense for how well they perform. But when it comes to other options that aren't so easy to test or might have a slightly longer time horizon, we might just simply conduct further research. So in the case of content marketing, you might be thinking about publishing videos on YouTube. And so that might take too long to really conduct a quick test. So instead you might perform keyword research or research other existing channels that are out there in your particular category and seeing how well they've done in the past and how well your own content might be able to perform in the future. Now, the key here is to judge relative performance. So we aren't trying to gather perfect data. We're not trying to optimize our efforts. That's a whole nother step that we're gonna talk about here in a moment. But the idea behind this step is just to get a rough sense of how each of the three to five options that you've selected in the previous step perform relative to each other which ones really stand out, which seem like they would give you faster traction and faster results, go through, conduct inexpensive tests, gather information, and further narrow the field for the fourth and final step, which is to optimize the best opportunity. This is the point where it finally makes sense to select and commit to a single marketing channel. And that's because, as I hinted at earlier, there's a lot to be gained through building experience, learning best practices, and conducting further tests when it comes to maximizing the potential of your marketing efforts. Now, when it comes to the tests that we conducted in the previous step, oftentimes those tests are not going to be profitable because you're just learning the ropes, you're just trying things, and that is why we focused on relative performance. 
But once you've judged relative performance, it's time to focus all of your time and effort on a single channel so that you can build experience and you can learn best practices and maximize the potential of that channel through optimization. So for example, when it comes to paid advertising, you can do things like writing better ads or conducting split tests or improving your landing page. And when it comes to things like content marketing, you can focus on how to write better headlines. Or in the case of a podcast, you can focus on learning how to identify and invite on higher profile guests that will help you grow the podcast much faster. The point is, Every marketing opportunity, especially in the beginning, has many ways that you can further optimize your efforts and gain more benefit from using that particular marketing channel. And by focusing on a single channel, you can accelerate this process and achieve better results faster. Of course, eventually, you'll hit the point of diminishing returns. That is the point at which you're no longer getting additional benefit from spending more time, energy, or money on the channel. You might spend a little bit more money, or you might might further optimize things, but you don't actually see a performance benefit from doing so, at least not one that justifies that time that you're spending. So it's at this point that you really want to restart the process. Either jump back to step number three and choose another promising marketing channel, or if a lot of time has passed and you've learned a lot about your business or your product, it might be time to jump back to step number one and completely restart the process so that you can identify the next best marketing channel. Anyway, that is the entire process. Now, of course, everything begins with the ideas that you generate in the first step. So I put together a video that covers 33 proven marketing channels that you can use to get started. You can find a link to that right here in the video player, as well as down in the video description text.